thriller, Mr. Quackers? But you're bored. Well, what do you want to do? Scuba diving. How are we going to scuba dive? Oh, that? That's my TV screen. Fake. It's the illusion. You know what? Since you want to scuba dive so much, why don't we still play a game? Let's scuba. scuba is for two to four players and I've already partially set up the board there is a little bit to take into consideration when setting the board let me just show you how to do this last row here of depth tiles here what you're going to do is you're going to find the depth that you're working for so we're working for the 30 to 40 meter depth and you're going to find all the tiles that have those on them and you have the meters and the feet on all of the backs of the tiles what you're going to do is you're going to flip them all over and separate all the blank tiles and the event tiles from the animal tiles. And just zoom in here and some of the animal tiles there. So there's the ones for this depth and you can tell that they are an animal tile because they will have a number and a star next to them. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to flip all of those over and give them a quick little shuffle. So once you do that, you're going to pick six of these to go into with the other tiles. So let's zoom out here. Flip all these over here. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then you kind of give those a shuffle as well. And then you will place them randomly on the board here in their designated rows. And then the four tiles that you did not use, those go ahead and go to go back into the box without looking at them. So once you get that final row in there, you go ahead and exchange one tile with a neighboring depths tile. So let me show you. You're going to pick something from this minus one area and you're going to go ahead and exchange it with something from this minus two area. So you can be, you can pick any tile from any and those are going to exchange. And then from the two area, you're going to exchange one with the three areas. Let's just say this one and this one. And then finally from the three area and the four area. So let's just pick this one and let's pick this one and now you are ready to begin the game. You start off the game with five dust markers of your color. You're going to get a bunch of these little round discs and these denote that you've already seen a specific animal. And you're also going to get some lovely oxygen. So you're going, to get, uh, you're going to get three of these big barrels, which represent five units of oxygen each. And then you are going to get five of the small barrels, which denote one unit of oxygen each. And you'll spend these on every turn. So now the board is all set up and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and take my first turn. Of course, I am playing as the green meeple here. So on your turn, you can move up to four spaces. You can move down four spaces, you can move left four spaces, and you can move right four spaces. If you ever want to come up, you can only move two spaces up at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dive off the boat. When you dive off the boat in the very beginning of the game, you can only go to these three spaces right here. So I'm going to dive off and I'm going to go right there. And I'm going to continue descending. So I'm going to go, that would be one, two, three, and let's just go over one just for fun. So that was my four spaces. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this tile over and see if I find anything. And of course, this is a blank tile. So there is nothing to see here at this space. So you can go ahead and remove that from the board. And just make sure you keep all the tiles of the specific depths 
in order. I like to put all mine in that nice little piles because it just makes it easier for breaking down the game and putting it back together next time you want to play. So now I look and see where I am. I am at the minus two area. So I'm going to have to take two of my little oxygen tanks and give those back to the bank because those are the ones that I have spent. Now everybody else is going to go ahead and they're going to take their turns. So this is what the board could look like after your first turn. Looks like nobody saw anything except for red. Red was able to come across a three-point creature. And what he does is he goes to the yellow deck because that is a yellow number right there. And he pulls the card and sees that he saw a, as soon as it focuses here, a blue spotted stingray with a lovely picture right there showing the stingray. Now they're going to go ahead and they're going to put this in their player area. They're going to put it face down so that people can't keep track of what everybody's points are. And then because he has seen that, he's going to grab one of his little discs and place it on that animal so that he knows he's already seen that and there's no point in revisiting that animal again. So now it is the beginning of my turn. This is the second round and stuff starts to happen a little bit more. So the first thing you would do is you're going to remove your dust markers. Well, just jumping off the boat, you didn't create any dust. So there's nothing you have to do with that. The next thing that you have to do is you have to draw a current card. And the current cards are the cards that are here at the top of the board that I have. You're going to draw one and you're going to see what the current does. So according to this, all red fish are going to move over two. And we don't have any red fish out. But we see we don't have any green fish, but we do have a yellow fish. So a yellow fish is going to get pushed over to the left one. So this yellow fish is going to swim over one spot. And we don't have any blue fish, and all divers are going to be pushed over one spot. So little red guy is going to go over here and follow that stingray. Green's over here, yellow's over here, and blue is now over there. Now, one thing to note with the current card is um, if you're swimming against the current, you're going to take that much of a penalty when you're trying to go against that current. So right now, if we want to go to the right, we're going to take a negative one penalty to that movement. So we can only move three spaces to the right at this current time. So let's see here. Well, as green, you know what? I saw that he saw something very interesting over there, and I want to go see that very same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start swimming. But when you start swimming now in the second round, you start making dust. So you place a dust marker where you start, and I'm going to go right here, and you place a dust marker right there. So I'm going to see what I see. First of all, I do see that really cool stingray. So you're going to go to the yellow deck, and you're going to find the stingray card. Let's see here, where are you? There you are. So you find that stingray card, and that's going to go into your area, phase down, of course. And luckily, there was actually a second tile here, so I'm going to see what else I find here. And it's a whole lot of nothing. So there weren't two animals here. We weren't lucky enough. So I'm just going to put the animal back, and I'm going to go ahead and get that tile off of the board. So now let's say it's a blue's turn, and they're not interested in that, that stingray. They're sure that they can find something else interesting. So they're going to start swimming a little bit here. So, you know what? Blue's feeling adventurous, so they're just going to go straight down. So I'm going to grab blue's dust cubes, and they're going to go, whoa. One's going to go there. One's going to go there, one's going to go there, and they're going to land right here. So they're going to see now what, oh, do you know what? I forgot to spend my oxygen as green. I'm so sorry. So green was two, so I have to spend two oxygen. Now back to blue. 
So blue is going to flip over their tile, and unfortunately they have nothing again. So they swam down, but they unfortunately did not get to see anything interesting at this depth. But of course now they're going to have to spend their oxygen, and now they're at the three mark. So they're going to go ahead and they're going to spend three. And the game will continue on in that nature, making dust. Whenever there is dust on an animal at the same location as an animal, like right now, uh, my green guy made dust where the stingray is. Um, he unfortunately now, nobody can go over there and see that stingray until the dust goes away. So at the very, very beginning of your turn, you're going to remove the dust markers, and then you're going to go ahead and draw a current card, move, see what you find there, and then pay your oxygen. Just showing you here, there are a couple spaces at the very top of the board that you can end up here. If you come to this area right here, you are considered snorkeling. Now, there's no penalty for snorkeling, but you're not going to find any animals up there, but you won't have to pay any oxygen while you're up there as well. So that is one advantage if you're trying to conserve your oxygen for something a little later on down the road. One of the last things that you could possibly encounter is you could have a little mystery thing happen here. So you're going to find a tile that has a question mark on there. You're going to find the question mark card that has the exact same um, depth on there. So this is a 20 to 30 card. So you find the deck there, and you're going to go ahead and you're going to draw the top card and see what happens. So let's see here. This says, you found an ancient pistol. Keep this card for three victory points. So that's pretty cool. You didn't find a fish, but you found a really cool old gun. So that's really good. You're going to hold on to that card. It's going to go into your player area, face down, of course. And you will have that towards your victory goal. And then the way the end of the game is triggered is by two methods. If everybody but one player reaches the snorkeling area or they're on the boat, that determines, that is, says that's the end of the game, and you're going to take one or two more rounds to finish it out. Also, if all the players but one have ran out of oxygen while underwater, the last player is considered the winner. And those are just the basics of how to play scuba. One thing I really like about this game is its uh, serene nature. It really felt like I was scuba diving. You know, it was just peaceful. You're going down, you're finding the, the animals. You get excited when you see an animal. It's like, oh, I know, you know, Bob over there found that shark, and I want to go over there. So I'm going to hurry up and swim over there. But the currents and ocean and everything, they're going to move stuff around. So it make it interesting when you're trying to plan your movement. So those are just the basics of how to play scuba. This was a really fun game. I did say when I was playing it initially that it really felt like I was scuba diving. It felt serene in nature. You're just swimming around and trying to find the animal. You get excited when you see an animal. You get excited when somebody else has animals. You know, you can go over there and you can try to get the, the points and see that animal as well. There are ways to combo the animals, which I didn't show you. But if you see um, certain combos, you can get bonus points for seeing the, the, like, um, the clownfish and the sea anemone. You can see those together. You're going to get a bonus for seeing those both at the end of the game. So it's really, really fun. So you, it's really fun to plan out your movement, try to figure out what you want to go see and everything. And then with the currents, everything shifting around and, and the fish might actually fall off the board and the fish fall off the board, you can't see them anymore. But you'll be pushed around and everything. So it kind of makes planning your movement interesting because it changes from turn to turn. You'll be like, oh, I want to go here, here, and then here. Then Everybody else takes our turn off, and you're somewhere else on the, on the board, and now you can't get to where you wanted to go initially. So it does make it really fun, very interesting to play. Please look for this on Kickstarter. I'll have a link down below for that as soon as I have the information. And as always, thank you for watching. Please do not forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and help support Cloak and Meeple. I do have my Patreon campaign going on right now, and any amount helps support Cloak and Meeple, gives me better lights, better cameras, and more stuff, and more content for everybody here. And again, thanks for watching.